Hello everyone and welcome to a contrast paint video for the Best Boy Lockjaw from CP35 for Crisis Protocol, part of the Wave 1 releases for the Inhumans. Been a little while since I've done one of these, did one on She-Hulk and of course during that one had an appalling accident where Agrax Earthshade went everywhere and somewhat ruined her but I managed to clean it up since then. But either way, we're going to try giving Lockjaw, Lockjaw rather, the, the contrast work. And we're mostly going to be seeing on offer today uh, Snakebite Leather is going to be the main one we're going to use here and some other colours mixed in but that's going to be the first phase for sure. Forgot to say, he is of course based in Gracier. This was the spray paint Gracier rather than the potted Gracier but it's the same either way. So yeah, he's sprayed in that colour and for the first time skip it's actually going to be the majority of the work. It's going to be the Snakebite Leather and then we're going to do some blending while it's still wet around his his mutton chop type bits his back legs and front legs because if we look at the official paint job which hopefully I can bring in a little bit here there is a distinct colour change to a darker colour around his feet and also uh, on the front of his face there and his ears as well so we're going to start by applying snake bite leather we're going to start on his back work his way down to the legs of the last things done so they're still wet and then while they're wet I'm going to mix in some wildwood contrast which is the darker brown contrast paint and then we'll probably have to leave it to dry because then we're going to use some potted grace here to touch up anything that accidentally spills onto the the base clean up his nose and his face but then going on beyond that uh, we'll of course have to handle the base which will be basilicanum grey haven't decided yet I think we're probably not going to try and give him proper eyes and we're going to make it look like he's using his powers because that'll be easier and that also means I can use another contrast paint but we'll consider that after we actually get the the first phase done which is the, the lion's share of the work honestly it's not going to take long to do in general just because he is one big mass now because he isn't textured contrast paint might not apply that well to him we're going to find that out right now it might take a couple of coats, but hey, let's get started and see. So there is still a bit of drying time to go as always but just checking in I quickly used some potted grace here to retouch up the eyes because again they got covered when we were doing the, the base coating of snake bite leather. Same with the tongue, the drool, I actually have missed a bit on the drool so I'll still need to fix that and the mouth although we'll end up having to go over his teeth again anyway and I totally forgot to do some wildwood on his mutton chop type bits here so I did that off camera really quick so and his ears so you can hopefully tell that they're a little bit darker just to add a bit to the tone and he has almost dried actually it's a very uh, warm day and I've got the window open behind me so the the fresh air is helping I think so anyway the next phase is we're going to do a bunch of little touch-ups with contrast paint we're going to use black templar on his adorable nose to get that detailed we're going to use vulpus pink on let's see if I can get an angle on this on the inside of his mouth so we're going to get his inside of his mouth his tongue after I get rid of that little bit of brown that I missed there and up to roughly here-ish because the rest is drool which I'm not sure what I'm going to do with yet so we'll, we'll do that on the fly um, so we'll do those two parts uh, if he's fully dry, he might also do Basilicanum Grey on the base at the same time and then there'll just be a little bit of touch-ups to do and if I do his eyes how I'm planning which I think is going to be Talisar Blue Contrast uh, it will need to wait until the touch-up phase right at the end because I want to do his like tuning fork in just uh, Lead Belcher Silver, not a contrast paint but just Lead Belcher Silver 
and then do the tatter on top a little bit to make it look like it's uh, got energy kind of humming through it. But we'll worry about that at the time. So I'm going to let this dry for like five, ten more minutes. Then we'll do nose, mouth, and potentially the base. We shall see. And so with this check-in, we're actually basically done in terms of stuff I need to show during a, a time skip. There is a tiny bit more contrast work, as I mentioned, uh, but we're, we're essentially there, super, super quick, uh, outside of drying time. So the last steps I'm going to do, that we'll just fade out and fade into the finished model with, is uh, non-contrast work, basilicanum, no sorry, not basilicanum, lead belcher, lead belcher silver for his tuning fork, once that's dry, do a tiny bit of Talisar Blue, probably, on the edges of the tuning fork to look like he's channeling his energy. Going to use that on his eyes as well to look like he's, he's in, like doing his teleporting. Uh, probably use... Well, go over his teeth again so they're not pink for a start with uh, some grace here from the pot. And then probably apply a little bit of non-oil to his mouth to add definition and a little bit of darkness to look like it's like there's actually a hole in there. And then probably a tiny bit of known oil to the slaverings as well, like the drool flying out his face, just so it's got a bit of definition to it. And go round the outer rim here with uh, just some potted black paint as well, um, a bad and black probably. Oh, and Agrax or shade in the cracks of the base once that's done as well, just to add a little bit of wear and tear and uh, definition to it. So, yeah, I'm not going to do a time skip for that, we're just going to fade out and fade in to the finished best boy. And so here we are with the finished lock jaw, still a little bit of the wash on the base to dry as well as the outer rim, but good enough and I'm losing daylight here to to show you this done. Did all the steps as explained, the only one I, I decided on the fly to do that I didn't uh, explain beforehand was when I was using the Talisar Blue for the tuning fork and his eyes. I decided to put a little bit on the base there and kind of blend it into the grey to make it look like he's in the process of like channeling a portal and he's about to enter it. Uh, but everything else was done, as I said, like the washes over the teeth and the drool and the, the tongue and all that. So it's been a while since I've said this, but we can do a ghetto 360 spin of the best boy lockjaw to see how he turned out. All in all, took like half an hour to finish. Very quick. The contrast doesn't look too bad considering he's mostly flat because it kind of looks like the the folds of fat on this type of dog anyway, believe it or not. So it didn't do too bad because usually large flat areas, especially like rounded parts, just don't take the contrast very well by default because it needs some recesses to sink into. But in this instance, because this is a dog with like folds of fat, it, it kind of works and he looks adorable. He's just running towards you on in a big old cuddle. <laughs> it's great. And he, he is massive, actually. Do I have... Oh, yeah, here we are. Um, here is Crystal and how he compares. So he is definitely larger than your average dog. And on that subject, actually, if you would like me to do a painting video on Crystal, uh, let me know. I think you'll be seeing this on Thursday? So I'll give it till the weekend to decide whether or not I'm painting Crystal on camera or not. So if you would like to see a painting video of her being done in contrast paint, can let me know. She'll be a bit more challenging than Lockjaw, I think, to try and make the water look at all good. I'm just thinking how on earth would I do it? I don't know. We'd have to wait and see. If you want. Well, either way, I'll finish her at some point, of course. But this wasn't about her. This was about Lockjaw, the adorable doggo. One of my favourite Crisis Protocol miniatures, just because it's so adorable. It's a shame that he's just going to get destroyed on the table because everyone will want to take away his teleport powers. He's a support piece and you don't really want them to be left to do whatever they like. But anyway, that is going to do it. Lockjaw painted with contrast paints from Citadel. Go check out the other videos if you want. I did one in She-Hulk recently, although as I mentioned, had a mishap with uh, spilling wash on her near the end. So it didn't look as good. But if you watch the getting stuff painted with her in it, 
I talk how I, I talk about rather in that how I fixed her, so she doesn't look as bad now after a, a, a spillage mistake. But anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this. Hope it was helpful and inspired you to get some painting done. See you next time. Stuff for now.